Welcome to our latest video, The Importance of Estate Planning for High Net Worth Individuals. I feel like every time I read the news, another celebrity or wealthy person died without so much as a will, let alone a comprehensive estate plan. And the consequences can be horrendous. You can have infighting amongst your heirs, then there's the lengthy, complicated, and expensive probate process that often spans multiple countries, and potentially increased estate or inheritance taxes. Much of this can be avoided with a comprehensive estate plan. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why so many people die without an estate plan, when the right time to set one up is, and what the benefits are. Why do so many people die without an estate plan? The reasons, or rather the excuses people have for not putting an estate plan in place, range from the reasonable to the absurd. For example, I know one guy who is worth hundreds of millions of dollars that doesn't put one in place because he truly believes he's going to live forever. That's not a joke. He really believes this. Besides being ridiculous that you're never going to die due to health reasons, what about accidents? What if he goes down in an airplane or something? Another ridiculous reason is that some people believe that putting an estate plan in place will somehow hasten their death, that they're going to die sooner. This isn't a good reason for not putting an estate plan in place. We're all going to die and putting an estate plan in place isn't going to make that happen any faster. And what about your family? It's only responsible to make sure your wealth is secured for them. But the more common reasons which are more understandable are not wanting to face your own mortality. Listen, I get that. Nobody wants to think about their own death. And thinking through how you want your wealth managed and distributed after your death is a lot of work and it isn't always that fun. There's a lot to think about. Should your wealth just be split up amongst your heirs when you die? Or should it remain in some type of multi-generational structure like a trust or foundation that is managed by a board who decides who gets what, when, and how much, and how it's invested? Or is it a combo? Some money doled out at your death and the rest managed in a trust or foundation and distributed at the discretion of the board. Or maybe some types of expenses, like medical or educational expenses, should always be paid, but other distributions are at the discretion of the board. Another common reason that people don't put estate plans in place, especially with those with assets and heirs in multiple countries, is not knowing who to go to to figure the estate plan out. One big problem people face is that most professionals only focus on a single jurisdiction and don't have the experience or expertise to put it all together into a comprehensive structure. If you go to a so-called single jurisdiction advisor, they're probably going to try and put you in a structure in their jurisdiction because that's what they know and that's how they make money, even if it's not the best structure for you. You need to find a multi-jurisdictional, solutions-oriented advisor that's going to analyze your situation, find the best structure and jurisdictions for your particular situation. Finding such an advisor isn't always easy. And finally, People just don't know who to trust. Most people rightfully worry that an advisor just wants to make money and will recommend a structure, maybe not because it's the best for them, but because the advisor sees a way to make money. And then, then that happens. Or that the advisor isn't as good as they claim to be. That happens a lot as well. My recommendation for looking for an advisor is to ask people who you trust for a recommendation. In my experience, this is the best way to get connected with the right advisor. Likely the person referring them has experience with them and can vouch for their capabilities and the advisor is more likely to fit in with your personality, which is really important in a relationship with an advisor. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. So when's the right time to set up an estate plan? There's no time like the present. You want to set up an estate plan before you need it. An estate plan does you no good if you die or become incapacitated before you put it in place. I remember a few years ago, I'd been helping a friend of mine plan a trust for the benefit of himself and his family. He kept dragging his feet, giving excuses as to why he couldn't formally pull the trigger. Then out of the blue, his wife calls me in frantic because my friend was in the hospital with a life-threatening health emergency. We had to rush to put something in place. With so little time, the only thing we could do was put together a will, which in the end he never signed. Luckily nothing happened and he survived, but he still hasn't put anything in place. I would have thought that this would have scared him into action, but I guess not. Another often ignored reason is you want to put the assets in a structure before the law changes. As you're probably aware, there's a global war on wealth. Governments keep overspending and keep promising people more and more benefits and they need to pay for it and they're looking at the wealthy to pay for it. 
Laws are constantly evolving and making it harder to put assets in a trust or foundation and reap the benefits. I truly believe that within the next 10 years, it will be almost impossible to put assets into a trust or foundation and obtain tax benefits. That said, trusts and foundations set up before then will likely be grandfathered as tax laws generally aren't retroactive. Also, a proper estate plan provides a host of other benefits, such as asset protection, privacy, and like I said, often tax minimization. But these benefits can't be achieved unless the estate plan is in place first. For example, if you don't have an estate plan in place and get sued, you can't then set one up, transfer your assets to it, and hope they're protected. That would be a fraudulent conveyance, and the assets could be clawed back and used to satisfy the judgment. At a bare minimum, you should have a will, but this doesn't provide a lot of benefits. It provides no asset protection, no privacy, no tax minimization, or probate avoidance. The only thing it does is make sure your assets are distributed in accordance with your wishes to your heirs. And this only after a lengthy and costly probate process during which your heirs won't have access to the wealth, which you don't want. And wills are challengeable. So there's no guarantee that your wealth will actually go to the people you wanted it to go to in the proportions you wanted it to. Much better solution is a trust or foundation. The trust or foundation will become the owner of the majority of your wealth and provide you with many benefits over and above the estate planning. Like I said, a properly structured trust or foundation will provide you tremendous asset protection because the assets are no longer yours. They belong to the trust or foundation. If you're sued, for example, the assets in the trust or foundation will be beyond the reach of your creditors. It's also going to provide asset protection to your heirs because the assets belong to the trust and foundation rather than them. This can be especially important if they get married, for example, because the assets will be protected in the trust or foundation and wouldn't be available in the event of a divorce. This can also help avoid the necessity of a prenup. A trust or foundation can also provide you a lot of privacy, which further enhances asset protection and increases your personal safety. A trust and foundation can also provide you with a host of tax benefits. For example, your trust or foundation can be located somewhere, like Dubai, that doesn't have income, estate, or wealth taxes. Also, if properly structured, the assets in your trust or foundation generally aren't attributed to you for tax purposes. So if, for example, you lived in France, income earned within your foundation wouldn't generally be taxable to you unless you got a distribution. Now, this obviously depends on where you live, whether or not you have to pay taxes on a distribution. This is beneficial not only to you, but also the other beneficiaries. Often, if heirs inherit wealth directly, they face the problem of paying income taxes on the income generated by that wealth, as well as wealth taxes and estate taxes when they die and pass it to their heirs. This often plays a large factor in where your heirs choose to reside, which may or may not be their first choice, but necessary for tax purposes. Having the wealth protected in a trust or foundation solves this problem because the wealth isn't theirs. It's not attributed to them. They will, however, likely have to pay tax on distributions depending on where they live. But this is much better than paying taxes on all the income and wealth. So there you have it. Why so many wealthy people die without an estate plan, when the right time to set one up is, and the benefits they can offer. The moral of the story is, set up an estate plan before you need it or it's useless.